Hello and welcome to my Eden Normal Guides. This is the first boss of the Eden's Gate Wing of the new 8 player raid series Eden. The first boss then is Eden Prime. For these bite sized guides let's go over what you need to actually do to defeat it. The first ability shown here is Spear of Paradise. This is actually a tank buster to heal through and to keep an eye on. We have Eden's Gravity, which as you might imagine is your raid-wide AoE to heal through, so if you're the healer, top everyone up before this goes off, especially later in the fight. Vice and Virtue does one of two things. The first one we actually see is where players get blue balls on their head here. If this happens, spread these to the outsides of the room before they fade. They explode and do damage, and obviously you don't want to stack them. Shortly after this, you will see Eden's Flare. This is showing you that you need to stand in melee range in the safe zone circle. The second vice and virtue you will see is where both tanks will get a marker and a tether placed on them. Split these apart and stretch them out to minimize the damage you take. Eventually, you will see Eden disappear and teleport to one of the corners of the room. At this point, you must move behind Eden in that corner to prevent death. As you can see, the cast of pure light will send Eden in a line across the room in front of it, killing everything in its path. This is why we stand behind the boss. Delta Attack will likely be your next ability you see. This places a cross shape and a big circle to avoid, at the same time as placing explosive markers on everyone in the room. Spread these markers out as best you can in the safe zones, and be careful not to stack them too much if possible. Next up is Dimensional Shift. This is another large scale AoE damage source to heal through, so make sure that people are topped up before this is actually cast. You will then see lots of white balls around the arena, as Eden begins to cast Pure Beam. This is where the fight becomes a dance. Simply keep avoiding the AoE lines, keep moving and you should be fine. At the same time as this, Eden will cast Paradise Lost, which will put AoE circles to avoid under players' feet where they were currently stood. So try to spread out as much as possible whilst running from the lines and now these circles. Be on the lookout here as during all of this chaos towards the end you will see Eden teleport to a corner again and begin casting pure light, which means that you now have to go behind the boss immediately or be destroyed as it charges again across the room. The worst thing you can do here is panic and for many players it's simply a better idea to just keep your eyeballs open, to dodge the AoEs as much as possible and focus on being in the right place at the right time instead of focusing on your DPS if you're a little unsure. It's better to survive this phase than to just wipe on it. The barrage of dimensional shift AoE damage continues until, at 50% health, you see the new ability Fragor Maximus, which is another massive AoE to heal through, but also signifies the transition of the boss to the next stage, as around the arena changes to show stars. Two adds will actually spawn here, but as they do, they dive onto the platform at two proximity AoEs that you must avoid, run to either the south or north to avoid the high damage from these dives. Now it's a case of killing the adds as quickly as you can. The adds themselves continuously cast Mana Burst, which is more high AoE damage to heal through. As you can see, it does a fair amount of damage, so focus one of these down at a time if possible. Obviously, your tanks will need to face them both away from the group, and they also need to be fully tanked. Once both of these adds are actually dead, Eden will then say it's ready to unleash its Eternal Breath ability. This is a massive damage AoE, so obviously everyone should be fully healed at this point. It's one of the coolest animations and a direct callback to Final Fantasy VIII's Eden Guardian Force and I absolutely love it. After the call animation you get back to the fight itself. The fight for the most part now is a repetition of Phase 1's abilities only in different orders. More vice and virtue tank splits and AoEs, more tank buster spears, more teleports of the boss to corners to cast pure light to be on the lookout for, more delta attack and that's pretty much it. Keep moving during AoE on the ground mechanics, keep your eyes open and you should be absolutely fine. It's a fun first boss and I cannot personally wait to see how many changes Savage brings. It has the potential to be one of the more interesting boss fights in the game. Thank you kindly for watching this short guide. Hopefully it was helpful and I'll see you all next time.